Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video here in the preview event for Modern Horizons 3. Today we're taking a look at a Red Black or Heraktos Affinity deck, an artifact aggro deck that gets to take advantage of the new Cranial Ram, probably one of the more exciting payoffs for the archetype. A two mana artifact equipment reminiscent of Cranial Plating. This one has a living weapon, so it actually comes attached to a germ token, giving it one toughness and one extra power for each artifact we control. So that can get out of hand pretty quickly in a deck where we play a lot of one and sometimes zero mana artifacts. And then we can later move the ram onto one of our many flying creatures for just two mana. So get in damage early while we can, maybe trade off the germ for an opposing creature. And then once we have the ram left over, we can still suit up our flyers to get in the last points. Then we're also playing the full playset of Ethereum Terramander, a callback to the blue Terramander. This a 1-1 flyer can only block creatures with flying. And then for six and a black, we adapt four, so it picks up four plus one plus one counters if it didn't have any counters on it already. But this ability also gets a one mana discount for each author artifact we control, so we can often activate it for just one or two mana, turning this into essentially a two or three mana 5-5 five five flyer that we can kind of play over the course of multiple turns turns, which is perfect, since we want to get these cheap artifacts in play as quickly as possible, and then if we have some mana sinks to spend our mana in the late game, that's also very nice. And then once we have a lot of cheap artifacts on the battlefield, we can also cheaply play the Refurbished Familiar, which has affinity for artifacts, so it gets a one mana discount for each artifact we control, so it can discount it down to just a single black, and then it's a 2-1 flying artifact creature that when it enters makes the opponent a discard a card, and if they cannot, we get to draw a card, so that's pretty nice value. And then a topping of her curve, another affinity card, one of the few non-artifact cards in the deck. Imskir Iron Eater is 8 mana, although we can often cast it for just a black and a red as a 5-5. When it enters the battlefield, we draw X cards and lose X life, where X is half of the number of artifacts we control around it down. So a nice bit of card advantage in a deck that's usually the aggressor, so we don't mind losing a bit of life. And then for 3 and a red, we could also start sacrificing artifacts to deal damage equal to their mana value to any target. So so this synergizes quite well with affinity cards. We're only playing the familiar here. Could also play the new Frogmere Enforcer, I believe is the name, which can be cast for either four mana or seven mana with prototype. So that's a nice expensive creature that we could also potentially play for quite cheap and then deal more damage with Iron Eater, but decided not to include it here just to keep the curve as low to the ground as possible. And then what better card than Ornithopter, a free Thopter that we can play to enable our artifact synergies and then we can later still suit it up to turn it into an actual threat. And then alongside Ornithopter, we've got a few more Thopters, since we're also playing the full set of a Retrofitter Foundry, a powerful engine card that has seen a lot of play in Historic before. And here it's great, since we naturally want to play a lot of cheap artifacts. And then we can start sacrificing Thopters to turn them into 4-4 constructs. So on turn 1, we could already play Foundry, play Ornithopter, and turn Ornithopter into a 4-4 construct. And then in the late game, we can also use it to make 1-1 servos, and maybe slowly upgrade those into Thopters, and then later for four constructs but of course ideally we have some cheap thopters to play in the first place such as hope of girapur a legendary thopter in fact so we don't mind sacrificing it if we draw multiples and then at two mana we're also playing the full set of Ayotia declares war which can read ahead so we can start from any different chapter but we often want to start from chapter one making another ornithopter token and then on chapter two we get to tap any number of untapped artifacts we control to deal that much damage to any creature or planeswalker so it gives a deck a bit of built-in removal and finally we get to turn one of our artifacts into a base power and toughness 4-4 until end of turn so that's another way to maybe get damage out of our ornithopter but we can also animate some of our non-creature artifacts so that can also get in more damage and we even have an artifact land in the mana base that's indestructible so we could be attacking with a 4-4 indestructible and then rounding out our deck here, we've got three copies of Springleaf Drum, which is a great way to quickly empty your hand, as we can tap an untapped creature we control to add one mana of any color. So it often pays for itself the first turn we play it, especially great with Ornithopter that we can play for free, but then just helps us play our more expensive cards while tapping some of our creatures that may not be attacking anyways. And then a Volt Scourge has been in Arena for a while, can play it for just one mana and two life to get a 1-1 Flying Lifelink. So a great recipient for a Cranial Ram in creature matchups where we're trying to outrace the opponent. 
And then we also have the full set of Oni called Anvil as another sacrifice engine that can maybe start going wide and making construct tokens, but it's also a great way to deal those last points of damage. If our opponent manages to answer all our creatures, we can still start sacrificing artifacts to drain the opponent while making some 1-1 one -one constructs. And then Anvil also has excellent synergy with Foundry. If we start sacking Thopters, we will still get 1-1 uh, one -one constructs out of it without needing to sacrifice anything else. And then Anvil is also very good with the Synthesizer, which gives our deck a little bit more card advantage while still being a cheap artifact that can stay on the battlefield for a while as we exile the top card when it enters and when it leaves. So it can maybe provide two extra cards if we sack it to the Anvil, since we're not going to make a Samurai token very often with it. And that should wrap up our deck here. The mana base, as we mentioned, has the bridge, another artifact source that can maybe contribute towards affinity, but it does enter tapped, so I don't want to play too many copies. And then mostly red-black dual lands that enter the battlefield untapped in the early turns, as well as a couple basics in case we need to search those up. So yeah, that's my current configuration. I've also considered playing Shrapnel Blast, which can be a nice finisher for an aggressive artifact-based deck. Although the problem with Shrapnel Blast is that it doesn't really help you in the initial setup phase of the deck, and you do want that critical mass of artifacts for a lot of your synergies to function. So while it maybe could be a nice one or two off as a finisher, I don't think it's really a centerpiece of the deck. Maybe more of a sideboard card to catch the opponent off guard, or if you expect a lot of removal, it can be a way to still sack your creatures for value. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hands, not particularly exciting, but it is probably functional. With double synthesizer, we get to see more cards. And Spring Leaf Drum with Volt Scourge can uh, make a bit of extra mana for us. Opponent on the blue white affinity deck, it seems. Yeah, I guess um, I'll just play Hope of Girapur. Since we're probably tapping our creature for mana. Okay, so we just want to play as many creatures as possible here. We'll pay the life. And play a Tarmander. So I guess had I played Scourge on one, I could have uh, gained one life here. Don't think I need to sack Hope of Girapur just yet. And there's Synthesizer. Well, we gotta hope to outrace them in the air while they make some huge tokens on the ground. Oni Cold Anvil plays well with our synthesizer and can also help chum block the construct tokens. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll play another one. Hope to find a land or a one drop. Terramander works. So. Yeah, I guess we'll play the Terramander. And then what's our artifact count? Three, four, five, six. So then I'll still be able to adapt. If my math is right. Hit for six. So we've got a pretty fast clock. And Anvil is hopefully going to help with this synthesizer problem. Opponent's got a flying blocker now. And a thought monitor, so yeah, those are speed bumps for sure. Could see some more affinity cards. So it does take a bit of setup with the synthesizer, but the payoff is certainly there. And now Kozilek's unsealing, so now future seven mana cards can draw them three. Should maybe start by going Anvil, Sacrifice a Synthesizer. Since I want to do this anyway. Find Cranial Ram, yeah, that's the type of card I was looking for. So we can cast it. And then still adapt to Terramander here, won't be able to move the equipment. But that's fine. So we can attack all out. Put 
opponent's going to eat the hope of Girapur, that's fine. So we'll adapt here. Opponent's at six. Don't really mind jumping with the germ since I was probably going to move the ram onto a flyer anyway. Bugin's Labyrinth also quite nice for this archetype, since there's a lot of cards you can imprint. So yeah, we'll see. Kappa Cannoneer, definitely a good payoff for the deck. Luckily it does not trigger the unsealing to draw three, but we'll make some spawns instead. And I would be fine to trade for the construct if they offer. Another unsealing. Sure. They still seem dead on board. Especially now with another ram. But, uh, to have this for mana. Move on to Volt Scourge. Can play another one. I guess I wouldn't be moving that one, but all out attack with the flyers will do it. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Not gonna say no to Foundry plus Ornithopter. Hopefully it doesn't get uh, taken away. Okay, so play Foundry. And just the one Ornithopter for now is fine. And then next turn, by playing Anvil and sacking another Ornithopter to Foundry, we can enable Anvil, although I guess Thalia will slow things down a bit. Alright, so that'll have to wait another turn, but still happy to get in for four. And uh, Yotia declares war, we'll have to wait as well. So we can play Bridge while we can uh, play a tap land and attack. So Yotia can potentially immediately take out a creature, but more likely that we start from chapter one to make another Thopter to synergize with Foundry. So we're making a 4-4 each turn. I see. Well, now our opponent's gonna turn all our creatures into 2-2s. Two I guess we still have a Yotia Declares War as an option. But that is pretty interesting here. Is our opponent playing an actual Hate Bear in the Hate Bears deck? Okay, so we'll uh, still sacrifice, I think. Even though Ornithopter can actually get in for two. But yeah, I think the plan is maybe... Well, maybe actually wait a turn on using Foundry. Since I prefer still making another token first. So in the meantime we can hit for two. And then maybe next turn we'll put the Anvil to use, which also benefits from Kudo on the battlefield. If our opponent plays something like a Yasharn, they can prevent us from sacrificing stuff. That would be annoying, but we have Chapter 2 coming up to maybe take it out. It's going to be a wedding announcement for 4 mana. That's acceptable. We'll make some 2-2s now with Kudo. And... Uh, I have to ask myself if I want to make a 4-4 four four here. Yeah, I guess that's fine. So we can tap Ornithopter and could also tap the bridge actually. Kudo down. Creatures are back to being 4-4. Four four. And then now we can play Anvil. Attack with the 4-4s, four and then sack Ornithopter to make a 4-4 four four and a 1-1. One one. So that's pretty neat. Make sure to activate the correct artifact here, since we'll still get a 1-1 one one even if we sack to the Foundry. Oh 
A Wilson, alright, opponent sticking to the bear theme. Does have reach. Announcement triggers. Take my turn. And then can maybe turn bridge into an indestructible attacker. So yeah, Yotia declares war, did a lot of work for us. Synthesizer, not quite as good here with Thali on the battlefield, but can still maybe find a cheap creature. And that's definitely a good one. Play it, draw a ton of cards. And get in with our four powered creatures. And then I can still use Anvil, perhaps. Maybe could have afforded to attack with a 1-1 one -one since I was likely going to sacrifice it anyway. But yeah, opponent takes 8. One more from Anvil puts them to 1. So, don't see them coming back. Wilson specializes. 5-5, five, five, I'll take it. And that should be it. Activate Anvil for the win. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a uh, reasonable hand. Got to turn one Volt Scourge, Ornithopter, can maybe declare war early. And for now, pay a bunch of life, because that's what Rakdos is all about. And uh, sure, I'll play the Ornithopter, although I probably won't be attacking with it. Okay, could take out the Elvish Mystic if we start from Chapter 2. Might be worth it to slow down the opponent, or we can wait for a scarier elf to maybe show up. And then, for now, could start from Chapter 1, although then they know to hold back their more powerful Elves. I think just playing the Ram is reasonable. Puts a bit more pressure on them, can eventually put it on a Flyer. And then tapping the Ram doesn't prevent us from attacking with a Germ, so that feels pretty powerful. So it does appear to be an Elf deck. Alright, Aladomri. Certainly worth taking out. So, let's just declare war here. And attack for three. Otherwise this might have been able to cheat something scary into play. You never know. And just a card advantage of the top can be quite powerful. Alright, so the elf deck is starting to go off here with visionary drawing cards. Now I can grow Ornithopter. Now the good thing is we're trying to attack the opponent in the air, so they might not have a ton of reach creatures to get in the way. So I think the plan is play another ram and play Hope of Girapur, and then next turn start moving the ram onto my flyers. And they may not want to trade for the germ, but if they don't, they're taking five. Alright, that worked out. So our opponent's at 11. With a land, I could move both rams next turn. It's gonna be a Warmaster. Can start going wide. A Priest of Titania here could still be quite scary. Elvish Mystic is maybe still acceptable. So I don't expect them to kill me next turn, and Foundry's a nice find. So we can suit up probably the Volt Scourge. Play Foundry. And then I can trade the Germ, that's fine. And then Foundry can sacrifice 
Ornithopter to make a 4-4. Four four. Could also sack Hope of Girapur, but they can still cast the company my turn at instant speed, so I don't think there's a point. And then, yeah, we'll have plenty of lethal flyers. Right, looks like we got there. And uh, I'll just keep all my flyers instead of making a 4-4, four four, but an all-out attack is certainly good enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Facing planes. Second hope of Girapur is a little awkward, so maybe start there in case they remove it. And a Pride Mate, so a life gain deck. Okay, so we want to play Springleaf. And then I could play Anvil and sack the Hope of Girapur right away. Or we can get this Declares War going. So next turn we can maybe take out the Pride Mate if it's only a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, let's just Declare War. Does mean I might have to tap some of my creatures next turn, and then Spring Leaf Drum may not work anymore. But we want to try and answer the Pride Mate while we can. Alright, Hope of Girapur's gone, that's fine. So I'm still capable of taking out the Pride Mate here. And Foundry was an excellent draw. So I can uh, play Foundry plus maybe Terramander. Keep Hope of Girapur safe since it's another Thopter for Foundry. But we can activate that one end of turn. A war leader's next. Pretty scary once it starts attacking. And an ornithopter is not bad. So I can for now maybe grow the Terramander. Since I'm gonna need Springleaf and Foundry. And then these two can attack. Ornithopter just represents a mana here with Springleaf Drum. So I can play that. Play Anvil. Play Hope of Girapur, or I can play Hope of Girapur, play Iron Eater. That's probably better. And then I likely want to chump with Ornithopter, or maybe just uh, make it into a 4-4. Alright, not the best set of draws, but that's okay. Springleaf Drum is great, especially with Ornithopter, but it can be a little bit awkward in multiples. Okay, Serpon gets to exile one of my creatures. And that works. And if they attack, I get to trade. Although, let's see, Rapun goes to 14, make a 4-4, four, four, 12, 13, can adapt, so they should just be dead. So I can block a 1-1 one, one instead of having to trade. So it doesn't matter too much how we do it. So it's 2 mana to adapt. So we can adapt and attack. And that'll do it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and uh, our hands not amazing since we have double Iron Eater, which we're pretty far from casting. Yeah, I think I'll take a mulligan. This is a bit better. Springleaf Drum good with Ornithopter, probably getting rid of a land. So we can go Drum into Ornithopter, into Terramander, and then next turn Synthesizer likely finds us a card we can play. Opponent Blue-White, and uh, looks like they're on a slightly different build of Affinity. Okay, Synthesizer, see what's exiled. 
Yotia declares war, we can cast. And then could take out Ornithopter, but I probably want to make my own token first to increase our artifact count for the Eater. And then next turn we should be able to cast it and draw quite a few new cards. Can take out Ornithopter in the meantime. In case they were holding up a Metallic Rebuke, for instance. And then uh, should be able to empty out my hands nicely. And refresh. Play a bridge, or we can adapt Terramander. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, plenty of artifacts. I guess I might be one short. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I guess it doesn't count itself. So I should have played bridge. Oh well. Don't think it's a disaster. Opponent with the unsealing, so they're definitely trying to cast the seven mana affinity cards and uh, we can animate probably synthesizer here since I wasn't planning to sacrifice it yet play the ram and then I can equip the ram tapping the token itself and uh, put it on maybe an ornithopter and then, yeah, had I played Bridge last turn, we would have had a little bit more damage. But I still want to adapt the Tarmander and Smash. And that's good enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play here with a reasonable hand. Maybe missing one of our payoffs to sacrifice Thopters or Springleaf Drum would have been nice. But we'll give it a try. So turn one Terramander. Can hang on to Ornithopter for the time being. Put on blue whites, found the cranial ram. Okay, that's not bad. So I can deploy it. I'll play one Ornithopter just so we have a flyer that can maybe attack and be equipped. But uh Good to maybe play around removal and save the author Ornithopter in hand. Dreadhorde Invasion, that's fine. Okay, so we can grow the Cranial Ram some more. Question is whether we Synthesizer or play Anvil. Might be Synthesizer. There's a couple of cards I might not be able to cast since I don't have red mana floating. So maybe I'll just go for the Surefire Anvil. And then we can attack. And I could sack an Ornithopter to make a 1-1 one -one here. Since we seem to have plenty of flyers. Opponent's at 10. So next turn we can maybe move the ram. Maybe adapt the Terramander as an option. And our opponent's gonna start gaining life perhaps. Alright, so I don't have mana to do much of anything except move the ram onto a flyer. Which I guess might be worth it. Or we could play Synthesizer and hope to hit a land or something we can cast. And then this would just trade for the token. I think we don't want to trade here since then our opponent actually makes a 1-1 that gains life. When we could avoid that by just attacking with our flyers. And then I guess the 1-1 one, one can attack, and we'll just end up sacking it anyway. But yeah, I think it's better not to let them trigger the case. Points at 2. So now Ram with any of our flyers could be lethal. The attack might imply a sweeper. And yeah, there's a Day of Judgment. But we can just sack something random to Anvil and that should still be game. Awesome, on to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play. And do we have a keepable hand? Don't actually have a one mana play, just a zero mana one. So this hand's a little clunky, but maybe being on the play makes up for it. And then our hand is sort of powerful with all these two drops. So we can play the Ornithopter in case we need a creature that can attack next turn, although it's probably not very likely. Animation module can maybe set up some combos. So I could either declare war or play a Cranial Ram. Since there's no creature in play yet, I want to destroy. Maybe start with a ram. And then hope to draw land next turn so we can double spell another ram with a familiar, for instance. It's going to be a brute scale. So likely an infinite combo deck with a rosy. So we might want to just declare war to take it out right now before they can untap with it. Could also play Synthesizer, hope to find a red source, but that feels a bit greedy. So start from chapter 2. Can still attack with a token even though the ram is tapped. But yeah, we're not really developing our board as much as we would have liked. A third land would have gone a long way. And next turn we can turn maybe Ornithopter into a 4-4. And a decoction modules next. Alright, found a land. And then I think it's just gonna be another ram plus familiar. Before attacking to grow the first ram. For those that have played or faced the uh, old-school modern affinity deck, those are probably familiar with Cranial Plating, which is a very powerful card. And yeah, so far Cranial Ram has been pretty effective as well. A bit more expensive to move around, can do it at instant speed, but the fact that it comes attached to a token is a pretty nice upside. Okay, so play Synthesizer can still maybe move one ram onto a flyer. And Volt Scourge not bad either. May as well pay a full price. Since I wouldn't be able to play anything else. And Smash. Opponent's gonna trade with a Matter Reshaper and still take eight. Unless they can do something here. Alright, so we got to see our Rakdos Affinity deck in action. Now, of course, we are playing this in the preview event, so we're not necessarily facing the most refined or top-tier decks in the meta, so take these results with a grain of salt. That being said, the deck still felt very consistent and powerful when we got it going. The Ornithopter package with Retrofitter Foundry is still a very powerful card to be playing in the format, but then we also got to see some powerful new additions here with Cranial Ram. The Terramander seemed pretty strong, and then the Imskir Iron Eater as a curve topper can also be a good way to refuel. But at the same time, we can also play a longer game with Oni Cult Anvil and Synthesizer, draining the opponent to death if our creatures don't get there, and the Synthesizer providing more card advantage. And then we still have a little bit of removal with the Yotia Declares War taking out smaller creatures. So yeah, the deck can attack from a lot of different angles and can still be pretty fast and resilient. So I'm liking what this deck has to offer, and there's a lot of affinity cards here to be excited about going forward. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.